morning. Thank you very much for joining me. Today, I am in the kitchen, as you can see. Um, we are doing another cooking collaboration video. I'm doing it with some other ladies. I will put their links in the description box below to their videos. Um, and we are all cooking on the same theme as we have done before. I will also put a link up here to our previous videos that we've done as a collaboration. If you're interested in cooking videos and you haven't seen them, you might want to go and see those. Um, right, today's theme is four ingredients or less and we challenged ourselves to come up with some recipes that we could cook using four ingredients or less, which is about as minimal as you can get, I think, in terms of actual recipes. Uh, so I have made two actual meals, what you could call a meal, one pot type meals. I've made one snacky stroke breakfast type thing and one snacky stroke cake type thing. So a sort of savoury snack, stroke part of a meal and a sweet snack, stroke cake. Um, all that having been said, I hope you enjoy the recipes. Without further ado, let me show you what they are. Welcome to recipe number one of my four ingredient recipes. Today's recipe doesn't really have a name because I invented it. <laughs> when I say invented, it's kind of hard to invent something that only has four ingredients, isn't it? But um, nevertheless, it came out of my head. Um, I'm going to cook it in the slow cooker. And I like this one because it's very much stuff that you probably have in the house. Um, it's based on a tin of corned beef, which is something that we always tend to keep in our store cupboard. And then we've also got a tin of baked beans. You can use normal beans, any beans at all. Um, these happen to be barbecue beans. I thought I would use barbecue beans because I felt like that would um, sort of add to the flavour as I'm limited to ingredients. I thought that would be a good addition, um, sort of slight barbecue flavouring. Potatoes, I'm using these Jersey Royals purely because they were best before the 28th of April and it's now the 6th of May, so they need using. Um, but I would say ideally you probably need, would use a more absorbent potato. When I say absorbent, perhaps a more, a softer textured potato. I reckon like a King Edward or something like that would be good for this. Um, anyway, these will be fine. And then also an onion. I've got half a brown onion there and half a red onion which needs using up so I'm going to use both of those and that's it potato corned beef baked bean onion that is it I'm going to start by finally chopping the onion chopping the corned beef into cubes and chopping up the potatoes into probably like one and a half centimeter sort of cubes roughly um and then it all just literally goes in the slow cooker. Right, that's everything in the slow cooker. I'm just gonna give it a mix round. Um, I, I wouldn't add any more liquid because the onions and potatoes will all produce liquid and the corned beef as it breaks down a little bit. Um, so I feel like the baked beans are enough liquid in that. So I'm just gonna give it a little mix round and uh, pop the lid on. I'm gonna keep oh, everything I cook in the slow cooker. I start off on high. It's, I would say, five hours on high, between four and five hours on high, maybe four hours, um, but slow cookers. You know what your own slow cookers like, don't you? The joy of this is that if you weren't doing a four ingredient recipe, you can add all sorts of stuff to it. If you had leftover peppers or mushrooms or anything like that in your fridge, you could add those to it. It's a, it's a bit of a sort of cowboy, we do a cowboy hot pot thing that is very similar to this, but with sausages. So I'm gonna call this cowboy hot pot mark too, I think. Okay, this has been in, I left it on hot for two hours and then switched it, to, or high for two hours and then switched it down to low for the rest of the time. It's been in for a total of four and a half hours, which I would say is slightly too much. I reckon three and a half hours would have been plenty but it smells amazing. It doesn't look the prettiest, but I think it's gonna be pretty good. And I have served it with some garden peas, but you could just as easily have it by itself if you preferred. Um, it, as I said, it doesn't look the prettiest, but it does smell pretty good. Good morning. Today's recipe is a banana bread recipe with four ingredients, unsurprisingly. Um, 
I am not the world's best baker, but as this recipe involves neither flour nor eggs, I think we might be all right. So ingredients for this are two cups of rolled oats, standard oats like that, four to five medium bananas, I have five there, a cup of peanut butter, or you can use any other nut butter that you choose, and a cup of chocolate chips. Now, I didn't have any chocolate chips. Tesco's didn't have any chocolate chips. The world has apparently completely run out of baking ingredients. You cannot get anything um, in the way of baking, pretty much. Um, so I've substituted a packet of Tesco white chocolate buttons, but that's not quite enough. I need a cup full. So I've got some cooking white chocolate and I'm gonna bash that up and add it in bash that up. That's a technical cooking term, bash it up, you know. <laughs> and you need to start by preheating the oven to 180 degrees. It doesn't say in the recipe. I will link the recipe below, such as it is. Um, I got it from Pinterest originally. Now it doesn't say in the recipe to line your baking loaf tin type of thing it is and um, doesn't say to line it with greaseproof paper but I have had experience of baked oats before and they are rather similar to concrete so I will be lining it my loaf tin with greaseproof paper. So the thing that makes the bread texture in this is the oats and it recommends to blend everything together um, but I'm going to start by blitzing the oats by themselves just to get them down to a more powdery texture for the, so they're not quite so chewy. Um. Yeah, that splits those down. So I'm now going to add the four of my bananas and two, one cup of peanut butter. This is now looking pretty full, so I'm hoping it's going to blend it all up together okay. So that's had a good old blend now, that's what it looks like. It hasn't broken up the big pieces of white chocolate brilliantly, but, you know, only a weirdo would be upset by finding a nice big chunk of white chocolate in their banana bread, wouldn't they? So that's okay. Um, so I guess we transfer it into the um, tin and then put some bits on the top. Right, it's ready to go into the oven, put some spare banana slices and some of the chocolate buttons on the top. And I reckon this is gonna be quite nice, I think, I yeah. hope. It took just over 30 minutes in the oven, so I'm just letting it cool and then I will take the grease proof off. Looking good though, quite pleased with that. Right, look at that. I am super pleased with that. William is going to taste test it for me. Just cut a slice, that's what it looks like inside. It's all cooked all the way through. And it smells very nice. Are you excited about trying it? No. <laughs> That's pretty good. It's very heavy and dense, as you would expect, because it hasn't got the flour or the eggs. Um, but it's sweet and flavourful, and it's really good. I mean, that would make a really nice snack, or, you know, as a piece of cake, or d d for breakfast even, if you're being a bit naughty. But yeah, I'm, I'm quite impressed with that, with four ingredients. I think that's not bad at all. Hello there, today's recipe is four ingredient today's four ingredient recipe I should say is bacon and cheese muffins and I thought these would be a good one to do because they're quite they could be a snack, they could be a quick breakfast, they could be lunch with salad or with baked beans or something like that. Um I thought they were quite could be used for a variety of different things. There's a versatile is what I'm trying to say. That's the word I'm looking for. Anyway, these are the ingredients. We need 30 grams of bacon. We need one, sorry, one, no, three quarters of a cup of milk. I've got semi-skimmed. Um, one cup of self-raising flour and three quarters of a cup of cheddar cheese or any cheese that you can grate, I guess. Um, I, the original recipe is for 12 muffins, but I'm gonna just make six, so I've halved it. So basically you start by preheating the oven to 180, which I'll do now. Um, I've got my muffin 
cooking thing ready with my thin tray silicone tray with um, paper muffin cases inside 30 grams turned out only to be one rasher which i thought was a bit mean for six muffins so i have added an extra one i've decided to double it and go for 60 grams cooked and chopped the bacon really small basically you put you put your flour in you make a hole in the middle that's just a little bit of bacon fat for flavor that i popped in there from the pan after i cut the bacon um and you add your other ingredients and fold it together until it's just mixed but you hold back one quarter of the bacon to sprinkle on the top so that's what i'm going to do now that's everything together i'm going to mix it and then transfer it into these And here they are, ready to go into the oven for 25 minutes at 180. Quite pleased with those, They've, they smell really nice. They've gone quite nice and um, browned on the top, pretty much. Um, the bacony bits look good. They're, they feel fairly light, um, considering there's no egg in them. And they have definitely risen, so proof will be in the tasting, as they say. And this is what they look like cut open. I'm actually really pleased with that. I have just tasted a bit of it and it is delicious. On the rest of my plate, I've got stir fried mushrooms and um, tomatoes, which I'm having for lunch, which needed using up. So today we are cooking my fourth and final four ingredient recipe. And it's a tasty sort of fairly filling lunchtime or or evening if you like soup soupy stew type thing and the four ingredients I've got two of my favorite store cupboard ingredients this um, which is chorizo cooking chorizo which i absolutely love i think that's such a useful um store cupboard ingredient i always keep some in and i put it in all sorts of different things and the same with pesto i like the fresh ready-made pesto rather than the f um, jar one i think it's just so much nicer and then in addition to those two, we have a tin of butter beans and some passata. Today I am only cooking one portion. I'm cooking for me because nobody else is here. So it's just me for lunch today. So I am going to cook small amounts, but obviously you could scale it up as much or as little as you want to. All right, I'm starting with a few slices of chorizo sausage. I've just cut those into quarters each slice and I'm gonna pop those into a pan. Um, they don't need any oil with them because it creates its own very nice spicy paprika filled oil. I've got that on a fairly high heat because I want it to sort of caramelize the outside or to brown rather than caramelised. You can see it's making the oil itself there as it, as it cooks. Um, so as soon as that starts browning, I'm going to add in um, half a tin of butter beans and enough passata to sort of cover it. Right, I have added the beans and the passata and that is just at this point really just needs warming through and all the flavours combining it's really so super simple I mean, again like the other recipes you can add things to it if you have some leftover bits of pepper or some mushrooms you needed to use up or anything like that um or you could do it with different beans it's very flexible these recipes uh, i do recommend Salt and pepper in this one. I think beans and tomatoes, I think, are both quite bland. And although you've got some spiciness from the chorizo in there, you do need a bit of salt and pepper. As soon as it's warmed through, which should only take a few minutes, add it to a bowl, put it into a bowl, and the pièce de résistance is a little swirl of delicious pesto on the top. 
And here is the finished dish. It's definitely turned into more of a chunky, stewy thing rather than a soup for me, but I could have put less beans in and more tomato. It's however you want it, really, but I quite like a chunkier sort of um, soup, so that suits me, but um, yeah, looking good. I hope you enjoyed those. We, I really enjoyed creating this video. It was quite hard to come up with some ideas that weren't just snacks using such a minimal amount of ingredients but i think now more than ever when we're not going out to the shops so much and we're relying perhaps more on our store cupboards this is probably quite relevant to us so i hope you found it useful or enjoyable if you have any four ingredient recipes that you would like to share please leave them in the comments below i would love to give them a try and um, yeah, go and visit the other ladies. As I said, their um, links are in the description below as well. And let me know if you want to see more cooking videos. If you have enjoyed it, I'd be really grateful if you could leave a thumbs up. And thanks very much for watching. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.